Hey oh, it's Eruption Fang here, and today I'm here to give you one of the most requested Borderlands history of videos, and this one's about Steve the Bandit. So Steve is a very popular character amongst the Borderlands community and has taken up a life of his own only having grown in popularity through the franchise's lifespan. His character design is in the form of a bandit raider, and he hasn't played a pivotal role in the story like many of the Vault Hunters or even the NPCs who the player frequently visits. Rather, Steve is more of an easter egg, making very brief appearances in many unexpected places. Steve's very first debut was actually before the first Borderlands game ever was released. Leading up to the new title's official debut, Gearbox had given Claptrap his own behind-the-scenes web series to show the audience what things are like behind all the guns, blood, and loot, but most importantly to give everyone the sense of comedy they could expect from this new title. And one of the people Claptrap runs by is Steve. You probably know that a game like Borderlands doesn't just make itself. As a matter of fact, it's the combined effort of many talented individuals. Oh hey Steve! How are the kids? Hello. Seriously, I, this, this is, I, 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 this, Steve, 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 do something with this guy, please. Hello. This would act as the origin of where he was spawned, and despite being a surprisingly funny character the audience latched onto, Gearbox very wisely used him sparingly, making sure not to oversaturate his charm and appeal. But despite having only one brief appearance so far, he was then put into the game's first DLC, the zombie island of Dr. Ned. Apparently he, alongside his best friend Jethro Shedd, were hired to deal with the zombie outbreak on the island. Zombie killing? This is new and different. Steve and I have hunted a lot of things. Skag, crab worms. <laughs> even went after Mothrak one. These brain suckers are pretty freaky, but eh, they're not so tough. Still, I'm happy my best pal Steve is with me. Yo, Steve! One behind you! Of course, it's team with these zombie buggers, but so far, so good. Still, you gotta find this dock if we're gonna get our reward. Unfortunately, Steve seems to have died and was turned into a zombie. Oh my god. Steve is dead. I can't believe he's gone. I really miss him. I can almost hear him. Hey, oh. What? What's that? Oh. Oh, my angel. Steve! Hey, man. I thought you was dead. What? What's that? Oh. Oh, you want a hug? Me too, man. Come here. The rest of Borderlands 1 pretty comfortably plays with the idea that Steve may have died as he doesn't make any more physical appearances in the first game. Rather, just Easter eggs allude to or mention him. For example, his next appearance is actually quite an odd entry. Once again, he makes an appearance in a DLC, in fact the one right after Zombie Island, in Moxie's Underdome. During her introduction of all of her previous husbands, husband number two teases the idea that it could possibly have been Steve himself. My second husband was fun. I figured by then that I deserved the toy. All for myself. And that's what I got. Still wish I hadn't broken my toy. But what made this inclusion so odd is in the next DLC, it was revealed that Mr. Shank was Moxie's second husband, and Steve is never brought up or shown again. He could have just been used as a space filler, but his inclusion in Moxie's list of husbands was an odd one. While I don't think you can technically classify this next appearance as Steve himself, there is an easter egg of Steve who already is an easter egg himself. In the third DLC, The Secret Armory of General Knox, there are various unique midgets hidden around the various new locations, and depending on where you are, you have a chance of spawning Mini Steve. Mini Steve can be found hidden inside one of the various lockers, screaming his signature line. And with Borderlands' fourth and final DLC, Claptrap's Robot Revolution, on top of the building right next to Mr. Blake's room is some graffiti of Claptrap with a speech bubble in binary. When translated, it comes out to say, Steve the Bandit. They definitely use Steve a lot in the first Borderlands. And while in release order we would obviously go to Borderlands 2 and his appearances there, 
In a chronological sense, the pre-sequel takes place before that, and considering I usually structure these history of videos in a chronological sense, let's just jump to his appearance in the pre-sequel. Disobeying the rules of logic, his zombification wouldn't stop him, but then again, much like with TK Baja being turned into a zombie, the zombie storyline is considered the most non-canon of all events. So perhaps Steve never did die on that island, or his side story of working behind the scenes to create a spectacle was just that, an on-camera stunt. Anyway, yet again, he does not appear in the core game of the pre-sequel, leading many players to have perhaps not seen his appearance. Rather, he shows up in Aurelia Hammerlock's personal character trailer, singing karaoke. While Aurelia ends up using her ability to freeze everyone at the bar, the only one left standing is, as you could have guessed, Steve. Oh, hey, yo! Ah, ha, ha! Ooh! Hey -o! Steve then once again makes his way down to Pandora where he is encountered in Borderlands 2's side mission Clan Wars. When Ellie intends on starting a clan war between her family's old clan the Hodunks and their mortal enemies the Zaffords, the Vault Hunter is tasked with sowing seeds of discourse in both factions. But surprisingly enough, Steve is not only seen as an informant for the Zaffords, but also the Hodunks. What makes this even more interesting is that the clans are both made up of family members and Steve fits into neither of these two's nationality being neither Southern or Irish. In fact, Steve is actually British. While 99% of his dialogue is him only being capable of saying heyo, in episode 3 of Claptrap's web series, he reveals to everyone his nationality. My low fat mocha frappuccino. Hello. Seriously, look, I'm a celebrity, and people that are celebrities are more important than normal people. Look, if I say out loud that I need a f low fat mocha frappuccino, look, it should just happen, okay? You know, Steve? Hello? Do you see this award? Look how shiny it is. It glows with the layered subtlety of my acting presence. I heard Scorsese wants me for Godfather 4. What do you think about that? Steve! Steve, what are you doing? Hey, hey, is, is that a gun? No, what, look, look, Steve, hey, hey, old buddy, come on, man, we're old pals, right? Godfather? And yes, this is what I really sound like, which you'd know if you cared to ask once in a while. It was Coppola, you f idiot! I mean, hey -o! Also, in that same episode, Claptrap reveals that Steve apparently has 18 children. Steve! Steve! Roll the footage! Steve also makes an appearance in Telltale's Poker Night 2 sequel. It's a poker game which crosses over with many different franchises, one of them in this case being Borderlands. In Poker Night 2, Steve is a recurring character, specifically in Moxie's bar setting, where he will fire a rocket at players who are eliminated. He also has a bit with Claptrap who insults how stupid he is. Of course you won with those cards. Even Steve could have won with those cards. And all he can say is hey -o. Hey -o. Shut the f up, Steve! People say I'm annoying. And thus we reach the events of Borderlands 3. Continuing on his trend to not be in the main game, Steve yet again appears in the promotional video for the new game. But for whatever reason, Steve the Bandit is changed into Steve the Psycho completely getting rid of the iconic design, replacing it with more of the standard psycho design we've seen through the rest of the game. If you ask me, I think they should have kept his raider outfit, even if there are no raiders in the game. A special character model should have been made for Steve himself. Pandora is home to all manner of animals. There's skags, racks, and various things I call Jeff, because I don't know their- Hello! We have talked about this, Steve! Jesus! 
Jesus H. Reindeer Games, my dude! Don't kill things when I'm on camera! Hey -ho. In the majestic, expansive sands of a world like Pandora, we must do everything in our power to protect the flora and fauna from the bandits and sometimes vault hunters that would damage them. Help! Steven, 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 li listen, please. A chance like this isn't gonna come around again. Do not fuck this up for us. <laughs> Don't you fucking do that! I went to bat for you with the network! You shoot at everything you film! For a lot of people hiring camera crews, that is a deal breaker, but not for me! I believe in you! Hey, 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 oh! Please! We don't say those words around here anymore because it might cause you a slight case of the dismember deads. Will we yet see a spider ant? A trash feeder? Time will tell. All we ever set out to do was become monstrously famous with minimal effort, but... But for now, that's all the scenes and all the appearances we've gotten of Steve so far. He's definitely one of the more hardcore fan favorites, being a bit of a meme himself and always a joy to see. But if there are any other characters you'd like to see me do the history of, then be sure to let me know in the comments below, and until next time, I'll see you in the next video.